In engineering, we often have the situation that we want to minimize a function. And thanks to software like SkyPy, this is often quite easy. There exists ready to use optimizer that we can directly use to minimize a function. And using such an optimizer as a black box is totally fine and often produces good results. But in this video, we are a bit more curious and want to take a look behind the curtain. Our goal is to understand the underlying algorithm. By default, SkyPy uses the BFGS algorithm if no constraints are passed. So our goal will be to understand how the BFGS algorithm works. But before we come to the BFGS algorithm, let us first take a look at one of the simplest functions to minimize. And this is a quadratic function. If the function is quadratic, it's very easy to find the minimum analytically. And even in higher dimensions, finding the minimum of a quadratic function is very easy. Knowing that we can minimize a quadratic function gives us an algorithm to minimize a non-quadratic function. This is known as Newton's algorithm. Newton's algorithm starts with an initial guess where the minimum might be. The basic idea of Newton's algorithm is then to approximate the function by a quadratic function. This means the approximation has the same value, gradient and curvature as the original function at the current point. As the approximation is a quadratic function, it is easy to minimize, resulting in a new point. Then a quadratic approximation at this new point is created and its minimum is found again. This can be repeated until the algorithm converges and a minimum is found. Before continuing, let us take a brief look at how such a quadratic approximation looks like. F is our original function and Q the point where the function is approximated. This approximation is also known as the Taylor expansion to the second order and is a sum of three components. The constant component ensures that the approximation has the same value as the original function at the point Q. This is the case because if x and q are the same, then every other component except this one is zero. The linear component ensures that the approximation has the same gradient as the original function at the point Q. For our application especially important is the quadratic component, which uses the Hessian matrix A. The Hessian is a symmetric matrix that consists of all second derivatives. This component ensures that the approximation has the same curvature as the original function f. Now the function g has the same value, gradient and curvature as the original function in the current point. The Newton algorithm then uses the analytic minimum of this function to compute the next point. However, Newton's algorithm in its simple form might fail due to several reasons and they are all connected to the Hessian. First, it might be that we simply don't have the Hessian available. In this case, we just cannot use Newton's algorithm. For example, in our call to SkyPy's minimize function, we only pass the gradient to the minimizer. Another way to compute the Hessian. The minimizer therefore needs to work without the Hessian. And even if the Hessian is available, if the original function takes long to compute, then computing the Hessian is likely slow as well. We can see this by comparing it to the gradient. The gradient is as large as the input dimension of the function. So for example, if you have a four dimensional input, then we need to compute four values. The Hessian, however, has way more values. It's a quadratic matrix of the input dimension. So for example, for a four dimensional input, now we need to compute 16 values. We can reduce this a bit by using the symmetry of the Hessian. So effectively we just need to compute half of the values, but there are still way more elements to compute than for the gradient. So effectively computing the Hessian takes way more time than just computing the gradient. Finally, in the previous example we were somewhat lucky. In this example the Hessian was always positive definite. Positive definite is a property that guarantees that a quadratic approximation has a minimum. If the Hessian is not positive definite, we could for example have a quadratic approximation that has a maximum and no minimum 
And then it's not feasible to find a minimum for such a function because the function has no minimum. Alternatively, the quadratic approximation might have a saddle point. Again, we have no minimum here. And in such cases where the Hessian is not positive definite, Newton's algorithm might fail. So what can we do if we don't have the Hessian available? The basic idea of a quasi-Newton algorithm is to approximate the Hessian. We denote this approximation now with the B in the formula. Of course, we cannot just take any matrix. Therefore, we need to make some constraints to this matrix B. The first constraint is that because the Hessian is symmetric, the approximation should be symmetric too. But there are many symmetric matrices and not necessarily all of them are good approximations of the function. So an additional constraint is required. But first, let us briefly remember in what situation we are. The whole algorithm is iterative. This means we have evaluated the function in a last point, computed its value and gradient there, then we created a quadratic approximation which led us to the current point. In the current point, we also computed the value and the gradient. Everything which is now missing is a new Hessian approximation. So let us briefly remember what the Hessian actually is. The Hessian gives the curvature of the function. This means how fast the gradient varies. And we know the gradient of the function now at two points, the current point and the last point. Therefore, we require the matrix B to be such that the quadratic approximation has the same gradient as the function in the last point. This equation that the quadratic approximation has the same gradient as the function in the current point and the last point is the fundamental idea of all quasi-Newton algorithms. However, we are not finished yet. There still exist multiple solutions to those constraints. This means another constraint has to be added. In fact, there exist multiple quasi-Newton algorithms and those differ how they constrain the Hessian approximation. So let us take a look at some of them. These algorithms all work in a similar way. Because the algorithm is iterative, we arrived at the current point based on a previous quadratic approximation. The idea is now that the new Hessian approximation should be as close as possible to the last Hessian approximation. Of course, while still adhering to the previous constraints. Oh, and if, if you wonder how we got to the first Hessian approximation, very often the algorithm is initialized with the identity matrix. The algorithms then differ in how exactly the constraint of being close to the last approximation is formulated. In the formulas, we will call the last Hessian approximation B prime. So B is the matrix we want to find at the current iteration, and B prime is the matrix from the last iteration. One possible constraint is to enforce that the matrix rank of the difference is 1. This is called the symmetric rank 1 update and can be considered as the simplest update. Unfortunately, it's not necessarily guaranteed to exist, even when minimizing quadratic functions. This does not necessarily mean that SR1 is a bad way to approximate the Hessian. In other algorithmic contexts, for example in trust region methods, SR1 is actually a viable way to approximate the Hessian. Another possible constraint is that the difference is minimal according to the Frobenius norm. This leads to the so-called Powell symmetric Broyden update or PSB update. The Frobenius norm is a matrix norm and converts a matrix into a number. It is computed by squaring every entry, adding each of them up and then taking the square root of the result. If the current approximation of to the Hessian is the same as in the last iteration, then the resulting value is zero. Otherwise, it would be a positive value. However, this update has still an important limitation. It does not guarantee that the resulting Hessian approximation is positive definite. And as we previously saw for the Newton algorithm, to use the Hessian in a way similar to the Newton algorithm, it is important that the Hessian is positive definite. 
the Davidon Fletcher Powell update or DFP update solves this problem. It guarantees that if the previous Hessian approximation was positive definite, then the new Hessian approximation is positive definite as well. It makes this by introducing a special weighting matrix and then minimizing the Frobenius norm of the weighted difference. Finally, we arrive at the BFGS update, which was our original goal. Like the others, this is named after its inventors, Broyden, Fletcher, Goldfarb and Shano. It is similar to the DFP method in that it uses a weighting matrix and guarantees positive definiteness of the approximation. However, it computes the weighted Frobenius norm of the difference between the inverse of the Hessian approximation. So it compares the inverse of the new Hessian approximation with the inverse of the previous Hessian approximation. And empirically, it turns out that this is numerically more stable than the DFP method. At the first look, this might seem a bit arbitrary. However, when we minimize the quadratic approximation, we actually need the inverse of the Hessian and not the Hessian itself. Therefore, making such a constraint on the inverse Hessian is not as random as it might first look. It should be mentioned that all of these minimizations can be solved analytically, resulting in explicit update formulas for each of those methods. This means that computing the approximated Hessian B is not an expensive operation. It consists of just a few matrix and vector calculations. Let us summarize what we have until now. The Newton algorithm minimizes a function by successively creating quadratic approximations and minimizing them. To compute the Newton algorithm, we need to know the Hessian matrix. If we don't have the Hessian matrix available, quasi-Newton algorithm approximate the Hessian matrix. They do this by using the gradient information of the function and the assumption that the Hessian should not vary much between iterations. BFGS is one example for a quasi-Newton algorithm. BFGS has the important property that it keeps the Hessian approximation positive definite. Until now we have covered the update of the Hessian approximation. However, most implementations, including the one of SkyPy, do not simply use the minimum of the quadratic approximation. Instead, they use this only as a direction in which to search for the minimum. This is called a line search and will be topic of the next video.